This is lesson 40. And in this lesson, we're going to use three transformations, translations, reflections, and dilations. So watch how I can accurately recognize a transformation based on the analysis of my pre-image and my image, how I consistently eliminate any distractors in a multiple choice problem using rays, and how I verify the selected multiple choice is correct by mapping the image on the graph. Let's start doing some application work. And now we have some multiple choice questions and let's use everything we've learned to answer them. And using rays, we'll start by just reading the question. The vertices of a triangle are located at these points, A, B, and C. A sequence of transformations to triangle ABC resulted in triangle A prime, B prime, C prime as shown below. So we have the original points and we have the new image. So we want to figure out what is the sequence that created that image. So we've read our question. This is where we're assigning this to geometry and we have a series of points, right? So I know that point A went from one, two, and it was transformed to negative five, two. And I know point B went from four, zero to B prime. And I'm finding B prime just by looking at the points here. So B prime is at negative three, five. And C went from zero, zero, and it changed to negative three, one. All right. So I have my original points. That's my key information done my first three sets. And now I need to figure out how did that change happen? And remember it could be a series. So the other thing I'm noticing here is that there are two transformations. Two things happened to make those points change. So here's going to be my plan. My plan is I'm going to map the original one and try to figure out which two things could happen to make this change. And looking at my notes here, I see that we have rotations. So the first transformation was a rotation and the second one was a translation. So I had to somehow move 90 degrees and then it had to somehow be translated. So it, then there was a shift of three and two, three and one. So I'm noticing that. So let's map out my our original points. Uh, so here's one, two, this is a, um, and four, zero is B and zero, zero is C. So here's my original triangle. So how would I rotate this? So just looking at this, I know it can only be rotated 90 degrees. Does it make sense that this was rotated counterclockwise or clockwise? So do I go counter or clockwise? Absolutely. This went counterclockwise because I went in this direction. So I can absolutely eliminate C and D. It absolutely rotated counterclockwise. 90 degrees. So that's the first thing that I know happened. So how do I figure out the next set? How do I differentiate between, did it translate three right and down one or left three and up one? So this is going to be my new challenge. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my original points, which are one, two, four, zero and zero, zero. And I know that when something rotates 90 degrees counterclockwise, my Y and my X change. And I know my first coordinate flips, which makes sense, right? It makes sense that I'm flipping over in this way. My X's are going to change. So let's do these flips to map out that first change. So my first one is going to be negative two, one. 
My second point is going to be zero. Zero is not really going to change. It can't be a, a different opposite. Um, and here's four. And my third point is going to just stay zero, zero. It flips and it just stays the same. So let's map these out. So here's negative two, one. So here's A. And then I have zero, four. Here's B. And I have zero, zero. All right. So here's. Here's my new figure. So I've rotated it 90 degrees. There it is. So now that I see my points, map marbles, you can easily see the translation. Now that I've mapped it out, I've looked at my points, I can see them. I can see how it changed. I'm actually going, I'm looking at my Bs. I just went one, two, three, and up one. So to the left three and up one, which is answer B. It absolutely cannot be my first choice, which is to the right three and down one. That would have left me down here. It only made sense this way. And if you're not sure, again, you can follow all the different points. I'll do this point here. One, two, three, and up one. Yep, that matches. One, two, three, and up one. That matches. So we have fixed, we have figured out the correct image and follow the pathway. So hit pause. You can jot this down. And you can see how I used a lot of just thinking to, to work this out. I eliminated C and D very easily. And once I did that, it was just mapping out that first counterclockwise point and figuring out which one made the most sense. Did my figure moving to the right or to the left? And I knew it had to move to the left to go from this image to here. It had to go to the left. So that made the most sense. Let's go to the next one. Let's read through it. Jose wanted to define a transformation or a series of transformations. So it means it could be one, it could be many using only rotations, reflections, or translations. Okay. So that's all we can use. Which statement about the transformation, um, that Lily wants to define is true. So which one of these transformations is true? And my guess is that this is the wrong name. This should be Jose apologies. Um, which one has to be true? Okay. So we read the question. Um, in this case, we, uh, we still know it's geometry and we have our original points. So we have a B and C. So I'm actually going to model out my points for a went from one zero to negative two zero. I know B went from four two to negative four two and C went from four negative three to negative four, negative three. And just looking at it, math marvels, um, just, let's just look at these pieces for, for a second. Do you think that these can be any of these figures here? Like just looking at it, is there any way that this figure can become this figure? No, they're not congruent math marbles. I have all my points, but there, this isn't the same triangle as this. So it does kind of look like a reflection. Do not get me wrong. This looks like it could be a flip. It's very similar, but it doesn't make sense because the points aren't the same distances. Like I can't find a midpoint that would make sense. So here there's one, two, three, there's a distance of three between here and here. Between here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so even if I went down the middle and said four and four for these points here, doesn't match here. It's not symmetrical. So that doesn't work. So it cannot be, it cannot be a reflection at all. 
And just by looking at it, because it's not a reflection, I know it also can't be a rotation because a rotation would not change the size of it. It would still be congruent. So it cannot be a rotation and a translation because they are not congruent. Um, C, does C make any sense? It cannot be defined because vertex A prime is facing to the right. It has nothing to do with this, this situation. So I'm going to go with D. It cannot be defined, cannot be defined, because they are not congruent. That I absolutely know is true. They are not congruent. This is the kind of thinking I want you doing as you're reading through these problems, really looking at the images when you have them, really paying attention to your points and trying to figure out, is there a way to transform one figure to the other? If the figures are, are congruent, then it can be a rotation, a reflection or a translation. If they're not the same, if you're seeing a size difference, it might be a dilation. But if it's a totally different figure, if they're not no longer similar or proportional, it may not be true to, to form. So use your thinking for these. Make sure you're using rays for multiple choice. Make sure you're putting all your thinking on the page. And as always, keep getting more practice and thinking and show your work on that page and ask questions. When you have ideas or when you have new thoughts, share them with one another because you'd be surprised what might be in your mind may be in the mind of three or four other people in the room and it can spark up a fantastic conversation about geometry. So that's all for today, Math Marvels. I hope this was helpful. I will see you in the next lesson. Take care.